All right, I can't believe Trump actually did it. If you guys haven't seen the full screen with Aiden Ross and Trump, I really would implore you to go back and, and to watch it because I, it was impressive on a lot of different fronts. And it's nice just to see a politician be forced to sit down and just, as I say a politician, but somebody who's running for presidency just to sit down and have a long-form discussion. And Aiden asked some really good questions. But then it's a live stream. So you got to have a little bit of entertainment. And they played a game where Trump had to react with one word with some people like the president of Ukraine to people like AOC, to even himself. And it was just, I don't know, I didn't expect it from Trump and from Aiden. It was fun. It was lighthearted. So when, when you watch the video, please just have some fun with it. Don't take it too seriously. And let me know what you guys think down below. So I, I did have some uh, some clips I wanted to react to. Okay. So it's this is the fun stuff I wanted to get sure. into. Uh, They're reacting to they're memes reacting now. Right here. This Wait. Is so cool. I'm actually no. reacting with you. All right. You know I put you on truth. That really? Doing, yeah. Thank you, man. Truth is my voice. You know. You know yeah. And it's doing great. Yeah. Every, everybody should go go on truth. Yeah. But but I will say that I put you on that, truth. that we're doing the show together, and the response was very cool. I love very it. Cool. I love it. Um, okay, so shout out to uh, Nell, but they kind of gave me this idea. I have two segments I want to do with you. Okay. The first one is use one word that comes to mind to describe that person. Okay? okay. It's a fun game. Fun. Let's start. All right. Who is the Oh, first my gosh. Player? And we got the Nelk Boys. One uh, word. Great. I love that. Okay, really great. Good. Okay. So you're friends with them? I, yeah. Are they, are they competitors of yours, though? Not even, honestly. You know, every time that... Uh, you know, I speak to Kyle or Steve. Yeah, it's they're, just only they're love. All great. They're really, really. No, good they're gym. just great. Yeah. But, but in a way, you would be competitors, but you don't. They, even they're more bigger on the YouTube side of things. I'm right. more live, so it's a lot. It's a different I see. world. So different. But it's kind of like parallel. Look at them. I mean, they're just great people. That was Dana White. He said, "You got to do them." I said, "Who are they?" I didn't know. <laughs> and after I did them, it was like an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see what we got next. Here we got ah me. Yeah. Well, I can just tell you that. One word uh, is, Idiot. would be outstanding. Oh, My nice. sons told me about you, and, uh, you know, they, they told me about how big Dad, you know, my baron. Yeah. He said, Dad, he's really big. I said, yeah, but what about else? He said, he's also a friend of mine, right? Yeah. But uh, big stuff, Aiden. So I just have to say outstanding. To do what you've done at a young age, and I know how old you are. You're young. You're seriously young. My suit is older than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. All right, let's see who we got next. We got, and we got, ah, you. Uh, um, patriot. I'm a patriot. There you go. Uh, Joe Rogan. Interesting. <laughs> he really is. He's, he's an amazing guy. He's a very interesting guy. Let's see who we got next? Mr. White. Oh, uh, well, he's a fighter. I'll tell you, that guy. He's a fighter. He fights, That's respectable. He, you wouldn't want to have him uh, against you. It's a little bit true with all of these people that you're showing. There's a good one. Elon, a genius. Truly a genius. You know, I see the rocks nice. come down. This is awesome. I, I am blown away. He's playing a game right engines. now. A reaction game with Aiden Ross. This is insane. They have no wings, no nothing. That was a couple of years ago. I said, right. what is that? <laughs> and I, call, I, I said, what was that all about? He says, well, we want to be able to save the engines. Not that they go into the ocean and, and all, but uh, he really is. He's a genius. He's also a good, very good person, Elon. Nice. Dude, this is fascinating. Kanye. Oh, my God. So He's a very complicated. Let's, let's <laughs> <see that. laughs> Because he is he's a really nice guy, but he can get himself into trouble, and he can get some other people, but you know? Wow. Uh, he's got a, Dude. a good heart. He does, he does, but he's complicated. Holy fuck. I, I am blown away by this. Oh, hold on. Let's go. Um, <laughs> start the pot, Aiden. Fake, but, but in all fairness, look. But she knows it. She's got a thing going. It's a good thing. Uh, she's a good thing for her. But there's a certain something she's got. She's got a spark. That's pretty amazing, actually. She's got a good spark. Uh, so I'll, I'll change it. I'll say spark. Mm -hmm. She does have. She she's gets on. You know, be, when she was running, she was running against a gentleman from Queens. And hmm. I asked his people, I said, well, that's are you interesting uh, response. careful? 
This guy was going to be Speaker of the House. It was going to be him, not Nancy Pelosi. And Joe, he is a good politician, a real pro, been around for a long time, many years in Congress. And I watched her on television one time. I, I saw a clip of her speaking, ranting, raving, going crazy. And I said, <laughs> uh, who's she running against? She's running against Joe. I said, oh, does he know what's going on? Oh, he's got no problem, sir. He's got no problem. I said, is he doing any debates? No, he doesn't have to bother with the debates. He's got no, he's been there for years. I said, tell him I said that he should be careful. Because I saw her. And I said, uh, she's Evita. I called her Evita. Maybe that's the best. Evita Perron, right? I said, she's Evita. She's in the streets screaming, shouting, going crazy, hugging people, hugging. Everybody's being hugged. I said, you better be careful. And she took him out. So, you know, I give her credit. But uh, okay. she's, got a lot of, she's got a lot of sizzle. Oh, well, this is, is that Ping? Uh, this is like the president of China, powerful, but not the president. Powerful man. He's a powerful How man. I know respectable. him very well. Wow. I know him probably better than anybody in this country knows him. And uh, got to know him extremely well. We had a great Zay relationship Ping. until COVID. COVID was a step too far. But we did very well with China. President Xi, we did uh, very, very well with China. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars. No president took in 10 cents. I took in, and I exposed China. Look, I want China to do great. I'm, okay, but they can't take advantage of us like they were doing for years and years. We'd lose $500 billion a year in trade, all of that. And, but then COVID came in, and uh, it really, I, I changed, I changed. But I will have a very good relationship with him. There's no, there's no, going to war with him. Uh, he doesn't want to go to war. We're not going to go to war. And we had a very good relationship, actually. He was right in this room. He came to this country. And wow. he stayed here for a number of days, as you remember. And we had incredible meetings, a very famous meeting in the dining room, actually. But he loves his country, and he's very strong and very powerful and uh, very interesting. But he, he really does love his country, I can tell you. Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom. You spelled, it. <laughs> no, you spelled his last name. He literally ruined California. Beautiful state. California is beautiful. Yeah, this is amazing. And when you watch him, he's always saying, oh, we're doing so great. Right, we're not right. doing great. I mean, I have holdings in California, and, and uh, I own a golf course right on the ocean, right on the Pacific Ocean in Palos Verdes. So beautiful. It's a club. It's big, you know, many acres, hundreds of acres, and it's it's fantastic. But... California is so precious. One of the most beautiful places in the world in terms of weather, sure. in terms of everything. And they're just destroying it with crime. The crime is out of control. It's a very dangerous place. And he, you know, I think he's, he, you know, it's a, it's a shame because I like him. I got along with him great. I helped him a lot with his fires. I kept saying, you know, why don't you do something about the forest fires? Yeah. There's no reason to have that. There's no management. They have no management control over the forests. I said, you have to do things. But I got along with him great, but he has not done the job. No. He has not done the job. Said. Wow. Got a few more. Let's see what we got next. Oh, let's go. Let's see what you have to say. Uh, he's turned very liberal, actually. They say he's the son of Fidel Castro. <laughs> and uh, could be. I mean, anything's possible <laughs> in this world, you know? You're going to learn as you get older. Anything's possible. You're going to, you've seen a lot already for your age. Per age, I would say. Per year spent, you've seen as much as anybody. But Justin Trudeau is, um, I got along with him very well, actually. But he seems to be going very progressive. And the people of Canada are not liking it. I mean, if they had no, they a good conservative person, which maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know. But uh, somebody that's a, a strong conservative would would win in Canada. Canada is very unhappy about the way they've been treated as people. But I got along with them well. Now, this man, I really got along with well. We had uh, wow. Little Rocket Man. Crazy we had the red button. He said, <laughs> I have a red button on my desk. And I said, no, I have a red button, too. And mine's, mine's bigger than yours, and mine worked. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was uh, a really bad month and a half. You know, he uh, was very, very tough on
President Obama, yeah. very tough on everybody. Uh, you know, it's the hermit nation, and it really is. I mean, it's, uh, I said to him, uh, do you know Elton John? No, no, no. I said, uh, did you ever hear the song Rocket Man? And I actually played him the song Rocket Man. He said, no, I've never heard it. I said, you're Rocket Man. He said, no, you call me Little Rocket Man, not Rocket Man. But I tell you what, so we had a very nasty two months. People were actually worried about it because it could have been dangerous. But President Obama told me that this was the single biggest threat to the United States, was Kim Jong-un of North Korea. And one day, I got a call from people that wanted to see me about him, and he wanted to meet. He did not want to meet with Obama, did not want to meet with anybody. Uh, got tremendous l nuclear capability. He does. And we've checked that closely, and he does. I got to know him very well, we checked it. We and I got great. along with him great. He's very smart. He's very strong. He's the absolute leader. You know, a lot of people say, oh, maybe he's not the leader. He's the absolute. When he's around, his people are standing up at attention. I've never seen. We were at a lunch, and they had 20 people on his side and 20 people on mine, you know, looking at each other. Right. In Singapore, we had a meeting in Singapore. It was the biggest press conference I've ever had. There were thousands of paparazzi. I've never seen anything like it. I think people said they've never seen anything like it. I was walking in, he was walking in. We met in the middle, remember? And yeah, of the course. The place just went crazy. But we got along very well. He's very, very smart. Um, and, you know, he's, he's a real power. He's a real power. I think he's upset that I'm not there. Nothing would have happened with him. We would have gotten along with him fine. I was trying to get him to do, you know, his, his country is, you talk about location, I'm a real estate guy. He's right between, think of this, Russia, China, one side, and South Korea on the other. I said, you have a great piece of real estate. You could make so much, you could have gorgeous things. I said to him, think about gorgeous condos going up on your shore. He's got a lot of ocean. He's got ocean frontage on both sides, right? But I got along with him great. We would have had no problem with him. Now he's getting very he's angry with us, him. and he's getting very angry with... <laughs> talking real estate. Uh, I understand he doesn't like her. He doesn't know her, but he forms opinions, and he doesn't like her. And he thought that Biden was a stupid man, a very stupid man. He would say that, but I say the same thing, so at least we agree on something. <laughs> but Biden is... They really have hurt our country. These people have hurt our country. Kim Jong-un was great for for as long as he was there, as long as I was there, there was going to be no problem, that I can tell you. We met in Singapore. I got to know him so well. Uh, and, you know, I always say that we have enemies from within and we have enemies on the outside. So he would be considered, I guess, an enemy. I think he would be absolutely fine. China, the same thing. I always say if you have a smart president, you don't have a problem with the outside. But you sure. still will have a problem with the inside because these people are sick. They're sick. And, and the people, the people from the inside, I mean, they're willing to take down our country. It's, it's incredible. When I look at uh, guys like uh, Adam Shifty Schiff, he's such a bad guy, such a liar with the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. It was a total hoax. It went on for two and a half years and total exoneration, nothing to do with Russia. The opposite. I was the worst thing that ever happened to Russia because I stopped the pipeline, the Russia pipeline. It's called Nord Stream 2. Nobody ever heard of Nord Stream 2. But, you know, it was just two years of this stuff. And actually putting our country in danger because you put your, your country in danger with another country. They made up a hoax. It was made up by Hillary and Adam Shifty Schiff and some of these people about Russia. And they did it actually as an excuse for her to lose the election. Wow. So... They said, why did you lose? She was expected to win. She didn't win at, at all. I won all those states that people thought she was going to win. She didn't campaign hard enough. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. All I know is we'd have stadiums with 50, 70,000 people. She'd go and she'd have 150 people. And I used to say, why am I going to lose Michigan if I have 75,000 people and she has 100? Why am I going to lose that? I turned out to be right. We won states that hadn't been won by Republicans for decades. And it was an amazing thing. But um, getting along with these people is really uh, getting along with the foreign leaders. If you're smart, our country is safe. If you're stupid, and that's a problem. We have stupid people there now, and those people are very dangerous. Right At first, now. Right now, now they're you know, I'm hearing stupid. there's going to be an attack tonight by Iran of Israel. They're going to be attacked tonight. I'm telling you right now. I hear it just through the same waves. There's no top secret information or anything. Right. But I hear that 
Israel is going to be attacked tonight. Uh, if I were president, nobody would even be talking about that word because it wouldn't happen 100%. And it's so, but when you have Pelosi like and when you have good. Schiff and you have all these people, I mean, when you have uh, people like Schumer, you have all these people. These people are a danger to our country. And they get a guy like Biden in. He's just a vessel. He has no idea where the hell he is. He's their perfect <laughs> vessel because he'll do anything that they want him to do. Right. So we really have dangerous people. They go after their political opponent, like me. I mean, me being especially. I mean, they've used law enforcement to go after me. They've come at me with everything. We just won the big case in Florida. You saw that? Mm -hmm. That was the big case. That was the biggest of the cases. And uh, we won that conclusively. We had a, a brilliant and very fair judge. I mean, you know, if I have fair judges, I win every case. But we, they put you in cases where the judges are totally corrupt. Where, like in New York, where the whole legal system is actually bringing down the state and bringing down the city because of corruption so bad. But um, we, we have to solve the problem from within. The problem on the outside, if you have somebody smart, is you can handle it easily, actually. But the problem from within, we have people that truly hate our country. We have to, we have to solve that problem. I want to I I get America, this right with what I'm about to say because you, you had said something about crooked um, people. And, you know, I, I want to say, you know, I want to get this right. That's why I'm pulling on my phone. You know, the same uh, DA, you know, Fannie Willis. Right, Fannie Willis. Uh, she she goes you very unfairly. She goes by the name of Fannie, even though it's F-A-N-I. She wants to pronounce Fannie. She's a little, little French, little yeah. French accent. And her yeah. lover, and her lover, Wade, right? Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Wade. Would, would you say she's very unfair? Well, not only to me. There are many people. She wanted to indict a senator, a couple of senators, I understand, that didn't even, that had nothing to do with it. Yeah. That. You know, there are many people, and this has taken place in Georgia. Georgia's phenomenal. Georgia's a great, I love the Let's people go. of Georgia. I've done great with the people of Georgia. Yeah. Alabama. That's me. South Carolina. I ain't Alabama. North Carolina. I'm Georgia. But Georgia is so good, and she's destroying it, and the governor should that do something are. about it because... Look, these are innocent people. These are patriots. They complained about an unfair election. Right. And they want to put them in jail for the rest of their lives. Right. Hillary Clinton still complains. Stacey Abrams from Georgia complains, constantly complains that she won the election. She said she won it twice. And she constantly complains about it. Nothing happens right. to her. Uh, we have two tiers of justice in our country. And, you know, they use that on me and my numbers went up. And I, I think I'm the first one that can say that. It, the numbers don't go up when that happens. No. But they have with me because yeah. I have a platform, a platform like being with you today. Of course. I can talk about how unfair it is. It's terrible. You complain about an election, they want to put you in jail. Right. It's not even thinkable. But they've weaponized government. This is Biden. The people that surround him, the people that surround him, and the, the beautiful, they have a desk, resolute desk. It's incredible in the Oval Office. <laughs> the people that surround the Resolute Desk, what they are, is a real danger to our country. I will tell you that. I'm not even sure Biden has any idea what's going on. Right. He's perfect for them because they'll do, they are running the country and Biden ha doesn't have a clue. He just wants to go home and go to sleep. Yeah. He should have never, he <laughs> should have <laughs> never been Christ. president. One second, I was just gonna switch this. So, so um, I know Fannie, Fannie Willis has treated you very unfair. I have a friend who's currently being treated unfair by by her, uh, he's a rapper named Young Thug. Yeah, and I was just—I heard that actually. Yeah, I just—I uh, just was wondering if there's a way that we can make sure yeah. he gets treated fair. That's yeah. all. So I've heard about him, and I heard he's being treated very unfairly very unfair. by her. Yeah. And I would tell her he's, she's got to treat these patriots that are being all terrible. They're going after him, and I hear Young Thug is being treated. I heard the name. Yeah. I heard it from other people where they say he's being treated very unfairly. Very unfair. So he's got to be treated fairly. Please. Thank you so much. So, um, let's, let's see who we got next on the, uh, the couple. We have a couple more people left. Who thought that he would say Young Thug in this interview? Like, bring that up. So Holy shit. He was very good with me because when they were doing the Russia this hoax, is, uh, they said I did something with Ukraine, him on the phone call. Zelensky. And basically, I congratulated him is winning the presidency. Right. And said some other things which were turned out to be perfect, better than perfect. If he sees any corruption, please report it to the Attorney General of the United States, which we have an agreement 
with the country. We have actually a, a signed contract with them, a very important one, that because Ukraine has always been known as very corrupt. I don't know if you know that. It's, it has been a very corrupt country. I think the people are great, but it's been very corrupt. Mm. And I said, if you find any corruption in the country, you should report it immediately to the Attorney General. That was — I did say that. And it was a very good thing to say. It turned out I was 100 percent right in saying it. So they made up a phone call. But fortunately, the phone was essentially taped. The call was essentially taped. I didn't know this, but a lot of times when you're talking foreign leaders, they have taped or they have stenographers. And we had two professional, really great military stenographers. So every word. So when they said I did these things, I said, no, I didn't. And then I, re I said, was that what taped or did they have the stenographers? The answer was yes. And they got all the way down the line to impeach me. They wanted to impeach me over this phone call, a single phone wow. call. And I knew that I had them because I had the tape or the stenographers, everything, perfect. Every word was said. And then they did the uh, impeachment. And just before that, because I remember Nancy Pelosi was crazy, we can't impeach him. Mm -hmm. Look at what the phone call was. She saw the phone call. Yeah. And then they decided, well, let's do it anyway. Can you believe how bad these people are? Horrible. Let's do it anyway, because they had the phone call. Yeah. It was, that's where Tim Scott, a great guy from South, a senator from South Carolina, he said, wait a minute, I've just read the phone call. That phone call was, per he was the first one to speak up. Tim Scott of South Carolina, then Republican senators spoke up. And they were great. I mean, you know, there was great, uh, of course, the only one was Mitt Romney, you know, real stiff, real stiff. And he couldn't get elected dog catcher right now. But although, and he actually voted, he actually only took a half a vote away, but everybody else voted for me 100 uh, percent unanimous with the Republicans. And it was fine. But what they did was they made up a call. And then when they found out that I had it essentially on tape, they looked really bad. And they had a decision to make. Do they pull it? And she said, no, we shouldn't be doing this, but let's go ahead with it anyway. I did nothing wrong. So That's you crazy. have to be careful. So let me just say about him. So yeah. when they called him and they asked him, did President Trump say anything that was inappropriate or wrong? He said, absolutely not. It was a very nice phone call. Uh, there was nothing unusual about it at all. And he could have grandstanded. He could have said, well, you know. And uh, he didn't say that. So I respect him. I think that I will be able to make a deal with him and Vladimir Putin very quickly. That's great. Even though it would have been a lot easier before this war started, and you wouldn't have a half a million people or maybe much more than that. I think it's — I think you're going to find that the number of people dead is far greater than what they're saying. That's a really nasty — it's a nasty thing going on over there. But I think I will be able to get him and Putin together, and we'll get it ended. It would have never started if I were president. It, we had no chance of starting. You know, I knew Putin very well, yeah. know him very well. And it was the apple of his eye. Ukraine was the apple of his eye. He did love it. He did want it. But he knew he couldn't do it. He wouldn't uh, — he would not — he knew he could not do it. He would have never done it if I was president. And now when you look at all of the death and all of the destruction, even of their culture, because those cities are wiped to the ground, you know, most of the cities — Horrible. Outside of Kiev, most of those cities are wiped down to the ground. And it's so sad. And when those buildings come down, there are plenty of people in the You know, people think those buildings don't have people. They have a lot of people in those buildings that don't want to leave. And those buildings come down. They're big buildings, big, heavy buildings. Then they come down. Mm -hmm. And those the people are crushed. I mean, instantly, they're crushed. Horrible. Missiles hit them. So I'll get it. But it could have been so — I mean, if the election weren't rigged — let me tell you something. If the election weren't rigged, we wouldn't have had Ukraine and Russia. We wouldn't have had the attack on Israel. And Israel would right now not be fighting. There would be no problem. And we wouldn't have had that horrible embarrassment of Afghanistan, where we gave them $85 kind of billion dollars worth of equipment, you know? and we lost 13 soldiers, many injured, yeah. many bad. You know, nobody talks about the ones that don't have arms and legs and their faces wiped out. But none of that would have happened. And inflation wouldn't have happened, because inflation was all started by their stupid energy policy. Yeah. These people are incompetent. And I'm, I tell you what, I worry about the next five months, even after the election. You know, they're there for two months after the election. Uh, I worry that bad things can happen in five months because wow. these, these people that are there and they're running our country are grossly incompetent. Gotcha. I want to uh, touch base real quick on the inflation thing. So 
you know, I know I, I saw you when you went to go speak in uh, Nashville. Yeah. Uh, you talked about crypto. You said that crypto can help with that. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned that's uh, somewhat like gold. Um, do you think that, you know, if well, when you get back in office, you would still fully support crypto? And, uh, you know, I, I just saw that the U.S. government, ever since you spoke about it, they're selling crypto. They're selling it. So would you would you how what would you do if you were in office with crypto? It's something they shouldn't be doing because they should be trying to build it. So. If we don't do it, China's doing it, other places are doing it, and they're doing it anyway. Yeah. And it's a very modern uh, currency, it's a very modern form, and I know a lot of very good people that are really into that world and into that market. They're smart, they're good people, and they think it's going to be very beneficial. And remember this, though, it's very important. It's like AI. Do you love it? Do you not like it? Uh, if we don't do it, China's going to do it, or other people are yeah. going to do it. Yeah. And we can't be left behind. And crypto is right in that sphere. And uh, it is a form of currency. And uh, again, China's already doing it. But if we don't do it, they're going to do it. AI is something that's really at the top of the list. Yeah. And there are pros and cons to everything. But China is trying to do everything. Yeah. And we've got to beat them to the punch. I would love to see you and Elon, you know, get together and talk about AI together. I yeah. think it's really, really important because, you know, Elon, with what, he's, with what he's doing, and then obviously you, you guys can really come together and maybe try to find some solutions for AI because it is getting out of hand. You see a bunch of fake stuff. It, it's, yeah. it's really getting crazy. It's, you know, one thing about AI that's interesting is, and who would believe this, to really be at the top of it and to dominate because China is very much into the artificial intelligence, yeah. right? Yeah. Even the name is sort of a weird name because artificial intelligence sounds like... It's not really a very good name when you think about it. It's <laughs> no, artificial. It's yeah. It says like fake intelligence, right? But regardless, so <laughs> you need massive amounts of electricity to be able to compete. Uh, Did you know that? Electricity. Yeah. And if you don't build twice the amount of electricity that the country currently has, now think of that number. You need more electricity than the country has for everything times two. Now think. So nobody's going to be able to get that done but me. I'm the only one because you're going to have to build power plants at every plant. You're yeah. going to have to have a power plant for yeah. every plant. It's all electricity-based. It's amazing. You need massive amounts of electricity. In the meantime, they built eight chargers in the Middle West for cars because we shouldn't have, obviously, all electric. You know, they have this electric car mandate, and they don't go far. They cost a lot. They're going to be made in China. Um, and... Under Biden, he wants everybody to drive an electric car. No more gas-propelled cars, no more hybrids, no more anything. Think of it. How crazy. And you can drive a car from here to Los Angeles on a tank of gas. Same thing with trucks. They want trucks to go electric. They'd have to make six stops to get to Los Angeles. With diesel, they don't have to make any stops, and they have leftovers. And the truck gets lighter as you go. You know, one of the problems with that is the weight. The weight of the batteries is so heavy, it's two and a half times heavier than a truck without, you know, with diesel. And you would have to rebuild all of your bridges Very all throughout the country. I didn't know that. And I asked the trucking industry supports me because of this. I mean, they probably like me, but they support me because of this, because they're not going to have an industry. I said, when you explain that you're going to have to rebuild all of your bridges in the country, when you explain that to the, to the government officials that come and harass you, don't they say, oh, I see, well, then it doesn't work. Just that one thing, it doesn't work. When you explain to them that you have to stop six times for four hours a stop, and you talk about a supply chain problem, right? But what, I said, when you explain that to people, just tell me, do they say, oh, then we can't really do it? Because, you know, it makes sense. We can't do it. Of course, it. yeah. It's all right. You could yeah, have a just, child go into problem. a meeting. Crazy. And within one minute or two minutes, they would convince you that it doesn't work. Maybe sometime, but I think it's, it's, it's essentially never going to work. In my opinion, it'll never work because you're always going to have a weight problem. You're always going to have, it's never going to be the same kind of a thing where you can drive for two days without stopping. It's just not going to happen that way. And uh, I said, what do they say when you go in and explain this? They don't care. They say, we don't care. We want you to go electric. And one gentleman, the biggest guy in the business, he said to me, all my life, I've been buying trucks. For 50 years, I've been buying trucks. And every year, they got better, bigger, stronger, more beautiful. Every year for 50 years, they became more efficient, more fuel efficient, better pollution control, everything. And if they make us do that, we'll go back 50 years more than that. He said a truck 50 years ago would have been better. 
than what they're making us use right now. And I say, when you explain that, do they do anything? They sit there, they look, and they say, we don't care. That's our mandate. You have to go all electric. Uh, these people are going to destroy our country. We can't let them do it. Horrible, horrible. Uh, Mr. President, I know you're, you're very busy. It's already 2.15. Uh, how much time would you say we have? Because I do want to give you this, this last gift. 